I told you earlier about what the races are doing in South Carolina. Uh, a student organization is bringing them in for this Uncensored America. They're hosting a comedy roast where two of the speakers are white supremacists. The subject of this roast uh, is, of course, Democratic nominee Vice President Kamala Harris. It lists Gavin McInnes, the founder of the white supremacist group, The Proud Boys, as one of the speakers. It also uh, listens this other fool, uh, Milo, I never can pronounce his last name, uh, but he's also a violent racist uh, and just absolutely nuts. Uh, Courtney McLean is a, is a 2023 graduate of University of South Carolina, also executive chair of the South Carolina NAACP Young Adult Committee. She joins us now. She created a, a change.org petition to stop the event from happening. Glad to have you here. Uh, what has been the response thus far of this uh, shameful, despicable, and frankly, gross plan roast, Courtney? Yes. So, of course, plenty of students, alumni, donors, and community members are very outraged what is going on. Students are hoping that they can take some direct action on campus, but some of them are feeling afraid to do so due to previous actions taken by the university last summer when students decided to speak out. So as of right now, we are trying to make sure that students feel comfortable on campus, as well as making sure to maintain the pressure on President Emerson and the Board of Trustees to get this event removed off campus. It sort of reminds me of when uh, the racist, um, I forgot that full name, he came to Texas A&M University uh, and we had Richard Spencer. Uh, and, and this is what these fools do. Uh, and then what they do is uh, they want to blow this thing up, make it huge, uh, and they get people outraged. Then it gets canceled to say, oh, see, there's no free speech in America. Uh, uh, this is cancel culture. That's always their aim. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. Currently online, both the student organization and the speakers are harassing people using colors, sexism, um, racism, and they even attacked one of our notable alumni, Bakari Sellers, with a homophobic slur. I have gotten some things directed to me from Milo and the student organization as well. So what they're really going to do is really troll people, get them to engage with them, really use rage bait, I would say, and really just trying to make this so much more chaotic and really hiding behind the use of free speech in order to spread hate on this campus. Well, and they, look, that's their goal, uh, and they want to do this, and so, um, and they have no problem appealing to the racist uh, in the Republican Party. That's what their goal is because that's how they built their names. That's how they make their money. Yes, I think the biggest disappointing thing is seeing the university say that this type of organization and these types of speakers are allowed to have a freedom of speech on campus. And it is sad to say that our university is really indirectly endorsing this event because not only are you allowing them to use the facilities, which is one of the nicest facilities on our campus, but you are allowing them to bring people who have a history of violence, of sexism, of homophobia, of racism, and creating a toxic environment for these students. And those of us who are wanting to speak out, wanting to demonstrate, we are really kind of pushed over to the side and told that don't really matter. Um, all of the emails that people have been sending, now the university has an automated response. So when you send an email, you're not even speaking directly to a representative anymore. They are directly sending you an automated response. And I've gotten about four different of those emails from people sending me um, the response that they got, and they were all identical. Well, in fact, uh, this is uh, Milo targeting you, uh, introducing Miss Courtney McLean. So he posted this video here uh, of, um, uh, and I haven't played the video. Uh, and then, of course, when you when you click it, you see the comments underneath here, um, <clears throat> and then. Uh, you see uh, folks attacking you. You see folks uh, uh, dogging you. But that's, that's what these folks do. I mean, it's all about trashing. It's all about uh, bringing their racist points of view uh, to the table. That's exactly what their goal is. And so, um, and again, that's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the biggest thing with the 
petition. So originally we really just wanted 1000 signatures, but thankfully we have surpassed that number and we continue to get an outpouring of support from alumni, from donors, from media, and really wanting to amplify what we have going on at the university, because this is not a singular incident. This is an occurrence with a larger problem that the university has. And as a student activist, I have been able to see a plethora of social movements occurring on campus. And the majority of them are all surrounded by just wanting to have a positive representation for minorities, a positive environment for us. And the university every single time either puts out some type of statement about diversity or say that the person coming to campus, that it is free speech and they can't do anything about it. So oftentimes our movements, like when we had the Black Student Matter movement, they came to the protests and they listened and then nothing else changed after that. And when I was in student senate as a student senator, there was actually some senators who engaged in racist and homophobic rhetoric. And when we tried to dispel them from Senate, the university said that that was their free speech to say these degradation and all these negative things about senators and student leaders that were part of the body. So this is not anything new. And we also cannot forget that they also allowed Governor McMaster to bring Donald Trump during the largest game of the season on to the field without consulting students, without consulting alumni, without consulting owners. And a lot of people were caught off guard by this because he is a very divisive character. So this university and the shenanigans that I like to call them now, this this is not new at all. Questions for the panel. <clears throat> panel. Derek, you first. <clears throat> I appreciate the effort that you're doing, and uh, and I salute you. Um, but if you can't stop this event, what what what's next? So currently, students are organizing a unity event that will likely be held on the same day as the Uncensored America event. And we're trying to incorporate voter registration, voter education, invite um, all of the minority organizations on campus and also invite um like different speakers and different representatives because the Black Caucus um, of South Carolina has said that they would like to join us. So being able to create a space that celebrates diversity instead of giving all of our attention to an event that is trying to degrade it and really demolish what this university is built on, that is what we're trying to currently do um, because the university is really sticking to that they can't cancel this event. So we're going to counter that event. This is Joy. I'm going to jump in here. Um, I, I mean, I would love for just to put the ad back up because I really want people to look at it. And I, if you are a moderate out there, maybe you're a moderate watching this show, maybe, you know, making a case to them, this is who's representing you. Kamala spelled C-U-M. The uh, ad that were out there chastising this young lady, the, the nasty things, I only caught a glimpse, but it was clear. These are sexually threatening ads, sexually threatening comments. And so freedom of speech aside, the question is, this the party you wanna support? Is this the party that you want your daughters to have to endure, your sons to have to endure, has an example of reflection of who they are? This is trash. This isn't becoming, and it's certainly not about family values. Certainly not. So, Courtney. Um, I am so sorry this happened to you. I am so sorry that this happened to you. Courtney, your but response? I want everyone else to. Uh, hold on one second. Courtney, your response? Yes. So, Luckily for me, I've been doing this for a while, so I've been able to get thick skin, um, especially being a black woman in South Carolina. It is not easy just existing. So when I am faced with these type of adversities from online trolls, I really take it with a grain of salt, because if you don't have any haters, then you're not doing anything right. And the fact that they are taking it upon themselves, taking time out of their day to try to degradate me and try to make it seem like I'm less than what I am, that is in itself a win for me because they are threatening. 
by what I have to say and by the movement that we are creating, because we will continue to push this movement, regardless of whether the university wants to continue saying that it is a free speech issue or whatever other excuse are going to come up with. We will continue to counter this and we will have action and hold the university accountable. Julian. Courtney, first of all, I'm very proud of you. I really appreciate the work you're doing um, and your resilience. Um, secondly, I want, you know, the history of black women in this country is that we have frequently been sexualized. Um, we were, you know, all kind of words, we're not even going to repeat them. We have been sexualized. What's so objectionable here is the woman who is likely to be the president of the United States has been dealt with in sexual, sexual terms. But we have to remember, and I'm not disrespecting your state, but this is the state of North, uh, South Carolina that flew the Confederate flag until a uh, young sister climbed up and took the darn thing down. I mean, this is a state that, uh, of the state of Strom Thurmond, um, and we can go on and on and on. Help us, what gives you strength? This is, you know, the, the odds that you face are daunting. Your president has been tone deaf, quite frankly. I mean, I don't, the people could have the little whatever they're doing, but it should not be on campus. You know, it should not happen on campus. If they, if you want to go be, for want a better word, jackasses somewhere in South Carolina, I'm sure they have many halls, public places where they could do this. To do it on campus gotcha. is a slap in the face. Courtney, uh, yeah, Courtney, Courtney, please answer. Yes, and... One of the things that the university prides itself on is the Carolinian Creed. That is something that we are given our freshman year that we are to recite. And one of the main principles of that is discouraging bigotry and respecting the dignity of others. And this event is directly in contradiction to that. But of course, the university is saying that this creed is not enforceable. So therefore, they are putting out a statement to make it seem like they are supportive of diversity, to make it seem like they are going to be an environment that is healthy for minority students. But obviously it is not because they are allowing for events like this to occur and allowing for our alumni, our students, for our Carolina community, for them to be attacked by this organization online. And I'm sure some people have also experienced um, experience of racism in person, because just last year, during the height of the Black Student Matter movement, students came out and said that they were being called slurs on the way to games, that they were being called slurs in their dorms, that they had had interactions with students in the library, having students walk out of elevators, seeing that it was a Black person coming in. This is not something new with the university, and seeing that they are directly contradicting with the creed that they wrote that they publish and that they are very prideful to have, it shows where this university stands on this issue and it shows the facade and how we are finally poking holes in what they have continued to perpetrate for years and years and years now. And of course, university released their statement. They said, thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts with the Office of the President. The university of South Carolina allows recognized student groups to invite speakers of their choosing campus. This is a long-standing tradition and is meant to foster student-led inquiry and debate. Please know that these appearances in no way represent an endorsement by the university of any individual speaker's message. We honor constitutionally protected speech. We have resources available to help students learn more about civil discussion and debate in a manner, allows that, in a manner that allows everyone to exercise their First Amendment rights. Please feel free to visit the Free Speech on Campus page on our website to learn more. We thank you again for sharing this feedback the Office of the President, University of South Carolina. Well, Courtney, good luck. Uh, when is it supposed to take place? It's supposed to take place on September 18th. And as we get everything together for the Unity event, it will likely be held, if not the same date, very, very soon. Um, and I will definitely be posting about that as well. Cool. And I would love to have anyone who is currently watching, if you would like to help fund the event, would like to come speak at the event and just show support for students, that we would love to have you there. All right. Keep us updated. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, we come back. Uh, of course, uh, Black and Missing, we'll talk about that. Plus, uh, the cop that uh, shot that. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. A lot of stuff that 
We're not getting. You get it. And you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 